In this lesson, you will learn how to apply fundamental counting principles. So to illustrate the fundamental counting principle, let's say you're looking to buy a shirt. There are four different shirts you like, and each one comes in three colors, red, green, and blue. So the question is asking to determine how many ways can we buy the shirt? How many possibilities of shirts do we have? Well, for the first shirt, we have three colors. We have red, green, or blue. For the second shirt, we also have red, green, or blue. Third shirt, red, green, or blue. Fourth shirt, also red, green, or blue. So our total number of options would be three times four, or 12. So we have 12 options to choose from. So the fundamental counting principle, in general, says that if one selection can be made in m ways, and for each of these a second selection can be made in n ways, then the number of ways the two selections can be made is m times n. So in the previous example, we had four shirts to choose from. So m ways would have been four ways to choose the shirts. And for each of those, a second selection can be made in, and we had three colors, so we had three different ways to choose. So we had four times three, or 12 options to choose from. And it's this principle that is going to carry us through the whole topic of probability. Because in probability, what we need to do is we need to determine how many total options are there. Because we need to determine how many favorable outcomes there are and divide that by the total number of possibilities. So in the next couple lessons, we're going to learn how to count or how to determine how many total possibilities there are. So in this next example, we're asked to find how many odd two-digit positive integers greater than 30 are there. So yes, we could count them all up and determine how many numbers fit within this category, but it's easier to use this fundamental counting principle so that we don't need to count, we can simply multiply based off the criteria. So looking at this example, we have numbers greater than 30. They need to be odd and two digit. So it could be something like 31, 33, 35, 37, and it could go all the way up to 99. Because once we hit 100, now we have three digits, which will not fall within this criteria. So we have two digits. Digit one would be the tens place. Digit two would be the ones place. So looking at the tens place, digit one, how many options are there for digit one? Well, it's gotta be greater than 30. So looking at the tens place, we could have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, or 90, which gives me seven options. It could be 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So seven options. For digit 1. Now for the ones place, digit 2, we have to take into account that the number needs to be odd. So we could have something like 31, 33, 35, 37, or 39. The last digit could be a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, which makes the whole number odd. So the last digit we have five options, all the odd digits. So for each digit one for each option for the tens place, we have five options for the ones place. So based off the fundamental counting principle, I can multiply seven by five to get 35 numbers that fall within that criteria. Here's another example. This one is using three digit integers and it's odd in this case as well. And we can only use the digits 1, 4, 5, and 6. So we have three digits, and the question is how many options do we have for digit 1, 2, and 3? So we have to take into account that it's going to be odd, and that we're using the numbers 1, 4, 5, and 6. It does not give any uh, specification on you know the size of the number as in like it doesn't need to be greater than you know 600 or greater than 400 but the only criteria is that it's odd and that we're using the numbers 1 4 5 and 6 
So the odd part of this would only affect the last digit. So the first digit, the only criteria we have is that we're limited to one, four, five, and six. So we have any of those four options for digit one. Digit two, same thing, the tens place, they can be any of those four numbers. The ones place, however, we are limited to the fact that it's odd and we can only use numbers one, four, five, and six. So what odd numbers do we have using one, four, five, and six? Well, we can have a one or a five that are odd. So the last digit, the ones place, there are only two options for that digit. So you multiply, because of the fundamental counting principle, four times four times four, or times two, to get 32. And we can multiply because for every hundreds place option, we have four options for the tens place. And then for every of those options, we have two options for the ones place. So here we multiply to get 32. Next, we need to discuss a topic called mutually exclusive. Now, if you think of the word exclusive in the context of a group, so an exclusive group, what that means is that other people cannot come in and affect your group. And that concept is also true with the idea of mutually exclusive, where mutually exclusive means that we have a situation where the occurrence of one event is not influenced or caused by another event. So for example, if you're flipping a coin and you flip a coin one time and you get a heads, it does not mean you get a tails the second time. Okay, the heads for the first flip does not affect the second flip at all. So the two flips we would say are mutually exclusive. Now with mutually exclusive, it is impossible for mutually exclusive events to occur at the same time. For example, a coin cannot land on heads and tails at the same time because the flips are mutually exclusive. Or you cannot roll a five and a six on a dice at the same time because the, each roll is mutually exclusive. So then with that idea, if you had a choice of rolling a die or flipping a coin, how many possibilities are there of events that could occur? Well, those are mutually exclusive events. For rolling a die, we have six options, and for the coin, we have two options. So the total possibilities that we have, if you can only do one or the other, is found by adding the two and the six to get eight. Whereas if you were to determine how many options do we have, if you were to roll a die and flip a coin, we would do two times six, or 12. So the key word is gonna be or. Mutually exclusive, the key word is or. And or, we think add. And then if it's not mutually exclusive, so you can have both at the same time, the key word is and, and with and statements, you're going to multiply. So we have what is called the law of mutually exclusive events, which simply says, that you add the possibilities together. So if the possibilities being counted can be grouped into mutually exclusive cases, then the total possibilities is the sum of the number of possibilities in each case. So mutually exclusive, you're going to add the total possibilities together. Now the question is gonna be for you to determine, would these two events be mutually exclusive? Here we have Elena, who can wear one of two blouses and one of five scarves. And the question is how many blouse-scarf combinations are available to her? So to determine the total number of possibilities, we need to figure out are these mutually exclusive or not? So can she wear a blouse and a scarf at the same time? Or can she not? If they are separate events, they're mutually exclusive. If she can do both at the same time, then they're not mutually exclusive. Well, she can wear a blouse and a scarf at the same time, so these would not be exclusive. So therefore, I would multiply. We can wear a blouse and a scarf, so the keyword is and, so we multiply. So you multiply 2 times 5 to have 10 total possible combinations. Here's another example. 
where Kelly must buy hamburger buns for a cookout. She can buy them in one of four supermarkets or one of three bakery shops. And the question is, in how many ways can Kelly run her errand? So we need to determine, are these mutually exclusive events or are they not? Well, we see the keyword or that she can buy from one of the four supermarkets or one of three bakery shops. She needs to pick between one or the other. So they're not happening at the same time. She's only going to one location. So these are mutually exclusive, so therefore you add them together. And once again, the keyword or also signifies that we're going to add. So we add four plus the three to get a total of seven possibilities. Now we're gonna look at two examples where we need to combine both ideas of mutually exclusive as well as the fundamental counting principle. So here's our first example where we are told to find how many positive integers less than 100 can be written using the digits 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, we know that numbers are less than 100. It could be two digit numbers, so anything from 10 to 99, but it also could be one digit numbers, so one through nine. So we have two possibilities. We have one digits and two digit numbers. And so the one digit numbers, we have five options because we can only use numbers two, three, four, five, and six. So there are five options, five numbers that would fit this criteria. Now for the two digit numbers, we have digit one having five options and digit two having five options. So we multiply five times five. So five times five is 25. And because it can be one digit or two digits, we're going to add these two numbers. So five plus 25 would give me 30 options. So notice we're combining the idea of mutually exclusive where I add the possibilities together as well as a fundamental counting principle where I need to multiply my options. And if you were to list these out, you would find that we would be correct. Here in this column, we have all the one digit numbers. It could be two, three, four, five, or six. Then the second column are all the numbers that are within the 20 range, so 22 through 26. And we have the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So if we count all these up, we would have 30 options. Here is our last example, where we're told to find how many license plates of three symbols, meaning letters and digits, can be made using at least two letters in each. This one can be kind of tricky because we need to think through all the possibilities. And this example says that we can have at least two letters. So we could have two letters or we can have three letters because there's only three total symbols. So it could be two letters or three letters. And then with the two letters, we have multiple options there as well. Because if we have two letters, we could have the first two symbols being letters and the last digit being a number. Or it could be the first and last one that are letters. Or it could be the last two that are letters. So we have three possibilities within the two letter criteria. But then if we had three letters, we know it's gonna be all just three letters. So here we actually have four possibilities to account for. And now using the fundamental counting principle, what I can do is I can determine that if we have a letter, letter and number, we have 26 options for letters, 26 for the second letter, and then 10 options for the digits. And then what we do is we multiply those together. For letter, number, letter, the first uh, symbol has 26 options. Second symbol could be any of the 10 digits. And for letters, we have 26 options. And then the third one, we have 10, 26, and 26 for the number letter, letter. So using the fundamental principle of counting for the two letter options, we multiply 26 by 26 by 10, and then 26 by 10 by 26, and then 10 times 26 times 26. And for each of those, you get 6,760 options. 
And then for the three letter possibility, we know that each letter, we have 26 options. So when you multiply 26 times 26 times 26, we now get 17,576. So now each of these events are mutually exclusive, where we cannot have a letter, letter, number, and a letter, number, letter at the same time. So from here what we do is we need to add up all of these possibilities. So when you add everything together, your total would be 37,856. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.